Hi everyone. This week we're lucky to have Norel Casey from the Canberra Raiders. They're the preeminent rugby league club in the Canberra region in Australia. And students especially will enjoy this because talking with Norel, who is the sponsorship executive with the Canberra Raiders, we're going to learn a lot more about sponsorship from someone who is engaged in it every day as part of her working life. So a warm welcome to Norel to the campus at the University of Canberra. And the first question, Narelle, ob obviously, I guess, is what are the main things that you do as a sponsorship executive? Well, working in sport in general or rugby league, it's um, you never have one job. You may be employed as the sponsorship manager or the sponsorship executive, but your title always expands and expands to cover a lot of different areas. But my main role that I was originally hired for was to look after an existing sponsorship database that is always around the 150 sponsor mark um, and then source new sponsors and make sure that their, their, their parts of their agreements are fulfilled in every, every uh, facet of, of their, their agreement. So in a typical working day, if it's such a thing, <laughs> what, what, or typical working week or two or three days, what sort of things would take up your time? Uh, well, primarily sponsorship, so it, the season's divided into two. You've got when your season is, is in hand, so it's making sure that everything's happening with your sponsors, all their commitments are taken care of, and then you have your off-season, which is actually your busiest section because that's when you are finding new sponsors, re-signing your existing sponsors, um, and getting everything in place so that it's ready to go for once the season kicks off. So you, when you're looking for a sponsor, um, then could you tell me what sort of things that you look for because the context of this will be followed up in the, the 10 minutes after this particular segment because in the next segment Narelle will be talking about a good sponsorship proposal and, and talking to our class about what the components are of such a proposal so I know you'll be interested to know about getting a, a sponsor and what you look for. Okay, well, a good working relationship is, is what you are ultimately looking for. The first thing that I do if I've got a particular property that's available is, um, might be for example, the easiest one to think of would be your NRL team. So I, um, I do a, a big chart up and I put NRL in the middle of it. Then I sit down and I think of all words that associate with that. Yes. And this is, might sound a bit strange, but it might be things like dirty or um, tough, yes. rough, um, all sorts of things like that. So once I've got that down, then I think of brands that may be associated with those words. Yeah. For example, if it's dirty, it might be Omo or yes. Dynamo. Four wheel drive or, cars. Or, yeah, all yes. that sort of thing. And then from there, I'll compile a list of potential sponsors that, yes. I, that uh, are affiliated with those particular words. And it's a matter of sourcing who you're looking for. Um, you want to be talking to the top person in that company. You do not want to be talking to the receptionist, etc., <laughs> yes, yeah. etc. Et so, and then there's a lot of work that goes into locating that. And the web is ultimately the best. And then from there, I find uh, just talking to people in associated fields. We use our board of directors a lot as well um, in in getting in contact with the people that we need. And that's because your board of directors have links in the business scene, or Absolutely. because they. Um, know what you're looking for and, and are prepared to back that? or uh, It's a wide range. Yes. Uh, we have uh, members of our board who are uh, in very top government positions yes. and then we have members of our board who are working in day-to-day, -day, uh, managing day-to-day -day businesses. So we have a really broad spectrum of people and then I will talk to that director according to what who and what they know. Now you've been there a number of years, so, yes. <laughs> so we can ask you, what, what sponsorship do you do you take the most pride in that you've, you've worked on? Uh, it would probably be uh, the CFMEU slash the Tradies, which is our major sponsor at the moment. Right. And they uh, are who? That the Tradies is the largest group of clubs in the ACT. Right. And largest, I don't mean by as in number of clubs, I mean in total revenue. Yes. Um, and the CFMEU is the Construction, Forestry, Energy and Mining Union. Right. They are a, a joint organisation, basically. And that was a fair few years in the making that, that sponsorship. We had to start off on a very small scale They, you know, in regards to sponsorship and then we worked on them for two to three years to get them up to the major level. They are currently our, well, once they're 
current agreement finishes will be our longest running major sponsor. And you'd be lucky in the sense that, well I guess your, your organisation makes the luck, that the Raiders is a brand name that, that's known nationally. When Narelle refers to the NRL, she's talking about the National Rugby League, which is the competition that the Canberra Raiders engage in, which is the highest level we can engage in in regular um, state um, rugby league. So, you know, you, you would find that in these, you're looking for um, sponsors sometimes for something new and sometimes something which goes on and on, but the Raiders as a brand name is something which is a big help. Oh, absolutely. Are you? I wouldn't want to work for anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be yes. really tough. We've got a lot of facts and figures that back up what we are trying to say. The NRL and ourselves do a lot of surveys, there's a yes. lot of media reports. So when we are going out to see someone, we've got a lot of backing in regards to what we're saying. It's not just us rattling off something that could have been plucked out of anywhere. So, um, and you'd have community goodwill as well, wouldn't you? Absolutely. The Raiders participate in the community to no end. We see in excess of 20,000 school, stu school yes. students a year and we do over 200 promotional events a year. So we are entrenched in this community. We often get asked what community clubs or, or small town clubs, if you like, can do to, to enhance their, their chances of getting sponsors or how to go about getting sponsors or even how to look for sponsors because we're talking about clubs that don't have uh, paid positions. Mm -hmm. So as, as an experienced sponsorship executive, if they asked you this, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, I would use definitely use the people who are within that club. You'll find in every club there are people who own local businesses uh, who are passionate about that club. Yes. I think that's very important when you're looking at a local, locally based uh, sport. Um, the other thing I would look at where that, that team is located and just have a look at the businesses that are around there. I mean, real estate's always a great one. You know, they, they're always after contacts. Yes. And also make sure that when you're talking to them, that whatever you talk about giving them, you make sure that you deliver that because that will ensure longevity in your, your sponsorship deals. And what sort of thing are the sponsors looking for, do you think, in a, in a small town or, or in a rural area, for example? It does vary, but I do find it is, tends to always be a combination of branding so that may be in regards to signage on the ground or if they do have a website, I find even the locally based sports have, yes. have a website. Uh, so maybe that and then also something to back that up as well in regards they may be looking for players to come out and uh, talk to their organisations about different things within the sporting arena um, and also involvement on their game day. Uh, and just, just coverage of that message that, that's getting out there. Because no one, sponsorship has changed a lot in the last, well, I've been involved for seven years. And dramatically, it used to be that if you loved that particular sport, you'd just go and yes. find all those people, they'd sign up and off you'd go. But now it's always people wanting something back in return. So it's, it's not really a sponsorship or a donation. It is, is money for jam these days. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing, I guess, that's important is to make sure that your sport organisation has a clear link with the media to ensure that your, your firm that you're after knows you through the local newspapers and local media so that then you're more likely to get sponsorship if, if you have some identity in the community. Absolutely, absolutely. Media is very, very important and you would have found that with Ben's yes. um, work last week when he came in yes. to see you. Uh, ben and I work closely together in regards to getting, especially our, our large sponsors, sponsors name out there and kudos basically for what they do. So you can see someone who abs absolutely gives the impression of believing in the product that they're selling, which must be a big help. So we'll take a short break now. And as they say in the commercials, and no doubt the Rages commercials, don't go away. There's more to come because we'll look at what constitutes a good sponsorship proposal.